The Philippine Coast Guard says the Chinese Coast Guard endangered its ships, and it plays into a much wider geopolitical conflict. Here's what happened. The Philippine Coast Guard has accused a Chinese Coast Guard boat of steering within meters of one of its vessels in the South China Sea, according to Ajans France Press. The incident occurred on March 2nd near the contested Scarborough Shoal, one of the region's richest fishing areas, and the Philippine statement accuses China of breaking international rules and risking a collision as its boat allegedly came within 19 meters of a Filipino patrol boat. According to the Associated Press, the last 12 months has seen three similar incidents around the same area, with two coming in June during a Philippine maritime exercise and one coming a month before that when a Chinese Coast Guard ship moved close to a Philippine Bureau of Fisheries vessel. Additionally, in November, a Chinese Coast Guard ship fired a water cannon at Filipino boats trying to resupply Filipino forces occupying the second Thomas Shoal. The broader context for all such confrontations is that China makes sweeping and contested claims of sovereignty over the South China Sea, home to an estimated 11 billion barrels of untapped oil and 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, according to the Council on Foreign Relations, plus rich fishing grounds and strategically important shipping lanes. These claims rest on the so-called Nine Dash Line border, first inscribed on a Chinese map in 1947, according to Time magazine, and despite the fact that a 2016 permanent court of arbitration ruled against its legal legitimacy. China has looked to enforce it, both with efforts at intimidation of other countries' vessels and by physically building in the region. The Council on Foreign Relations explains, in recent years, satellite imagery has shown China's increased efforts to reclaim land in the South China Sea by physically increasing the size of islands or creating new islands altogether. Practically, this means that in addition to piling sand onto existing reefs, China has built ports, military installations, and airstrips, most notably in the Paracel and Spratly Islands, where it has 20 and 7 outposts, respectively. Additionally, and more recently, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS, published satellite images that show China is also aggressively building electronic warfare installations in the area with the same broad aims in mind. The CSIS suggests that these installations could be designed to turn the waterway into an electronic dead zone in which U.S. ships and planes would find it hard to function. This last idea comes from the reality that while its policies regularly put China into direct confrontation with a number of nations in its region, including competing claimants Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Vietnam, they also place it in conflict with the U.S., which has sought to maintain freedom of navigation in the region. However, the U.S. is by no means the only outside interest that China has taken on in recent months, and the South China Sea is by no means the only area of water where it has caused controversy. In February, for instance, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison asked the Chinese government to explain what he called the dangerous act of shining a laser at an Australian P-8A surveillance aircraft that was tracking two Chinese Navy vessels through the Arafura Sea, inside Australia's exclusive economic zone, according to CNN. Meanwhile, in October, China joined up with Russian ships to circle Japan for the first time, in a move Japan's deputy chief cabinet secretary said the country was paying close attention to. Both of those incidents pointed toward a broader willingness for confrontation, but that is also not the only factor dictating the tone of Chinese maritime activity. There is also a generalized suspicion of the existing international order. In the same month as the laser incident, for instance, satellite company Unseen Labs broke the story that a new Chinese data protection law may be causing an increasing number of vessels to switch off tracking systems usually used in maritime transport, and the effect could be to help conceal the activities of fishing boats while worsening the current shipping crisis and congestion of ports. Unseen Labs' data reveals that up to 80% of vessels didn't broadcast an AIS signal during an eight-day satellite campaign in the East China Sea in November, which combined with the fact that six of the world's ten busiest container ports are in China, potentially presents a major obstacle for the international shipping movements. The new law behind the shift is essentially about closing off Chinese data to other countries, requiring all handlers of Chinese data to gain government approval before any transfer of data to foreign countries. Unseen Labs suggests that the recent problems come from companies effectively playing it safe by turning off tracking systems before seeing how the new law will be implemented. In other words, they're seeing how willing or unwilling China is to interact with other countries and on what terms. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.